I'm on Prozac. Oh, oh my God. I've been seeing a therapist. Oh my God, I think that's great. Curtain going up on the new season. We're going to be offering you some coming attractions over the next few weeks. And we begin at the movies. Jim Axelrod takes a closer look at an anxiously awaited prequel to the wildly popular television series, The Sopranos. After six seasons, 86 episodes, and a place on just about every critic's list of most influential TV shows ever. We are a family. And even in this f***ed up day and age, that means something. After Tony Soprano's North Jersey Mafia family rewrote the rules, spurning network standards. So what, no f***ing eating now? Hey. hey! For the freedom of cable. It's been a long odyssey with your mother, hasn't it? All these last 500 years just seem to race by. After show creator David Chase gave us a brutal mob boss who spent sessions with his shrink talking about his mother. And where did all that come from? The therapy part and the mother part? Well, I was in therapy, um, largely because of my mother, you know. He knew exactly what he'd hear once the series was over. Don't stop! People that I'd meet socially would say, are you going to do more? Oh, we should do more. Are we always thinking, never, I'm done? Yeah, yes I did. But 14 years later, turns out he wasn't done. James Gandolfini's death in 2013 meant a sequel was out. So Chase went the other way, setting a movie 30 plus years before the show. The Many Saints of Newark is the story of Dickie Moltisanti, a father figure to the young Tony who'd been mentioned on The Sopranos, but never fleshed out. You remember Dickie Moltisanti? No. No? Is that what you said? Is he a friend of yours? He was my father. I went back over my memories and I thought, oh yeah, Dickie Moltisanti was all that talk about him. And he was really, a, you know, a badass. I, I'm interested in that. I'd like to, like to find out who that guy was. This isn't a Tony Soprano origin story. No, it is not. We wanted to make a gangster movie. We didn't want to make an origin story. We wanted to make a gangster movie. Whatever Chase's intentions, a prequel meant meeting younger versions of such well-known and beloved characters as Sylvia, Uncle Junior, and Tony's mother, Livia, and making sure they rang true. Where's the line between honoring the integrity of the character and parody? Mostly casting. Mm. That's mostly where the line is. More than writing? Yeah, I think so. I felt this obligation to these characters as a fan of The Sopranos. Actor John Magaro plays the young Silvio Dante. Hey, so I need to talk to my Uncle Dickie. He's not here. His car's here. Battery's dead. Tony Soprano's eventual right-hand man, portrayed by Steve Van Zandt in the show. Here, go ahead. That's your I made bail so fast, my soup was still warm when I got home. For me, it started with the, the you know, put the puss he has, that's kind of the frown he has. And then it gets into the shoulders a little bit. And then it's, you know, he always has his hands kind of like this. He kind of keeps his arms in. Magaro says the pressure to capture the essence of these iconic characters and not do impressions of them was felt cast wide. You know, nothing is like playing a character where you have millions of rabid fans who are ready to pounce on you at the slightest mistake. And, uh, you know, this has come out in a few weeks and uh, I'm going to have to turn my phone off and internet off for a few weeks because it's going to be scary as hell. You know, they're going to come at us. No choice will be more scrutinized than the actor cast to play the young Tony Soprano. Did you audition other actors? Yes. We auditioned uh, other actors prior to him. Once you auditioned him, you knew? Yeah. Him. What'd you say? Is Michael Gandolfini, James Gandolfini's son. The first instinct was no. It comes with pressure. It comes with a responsibility. And, and then a whole nother layer of, you know, playing my dad's part. But then he did something he'd never done before. 
before your prep for the audition, you had never watched the series? That is true, yeah, I'd never seen it. And my dad passed, so it was kind of a thing like, it's gonna be hard, I don't really wanna open that up right now. And then I watched the first season before the audition and just fell in love. It was just, I was so proud of my dad. He studied his dad's work, especially those therapy scenes. This isn't gonna work, I can't talk about my personal life hours with a character who has triggers and impulses and a mindset so it's such a gift i have hours inside of a mind that i'm about to play oh what's the matter don't cry it's only me your uncle tony i don't know what it is it's like a scam or something the gift was enough confidence to give it a go despite the shadows and footsteps he knew he'd confront did any part of you think you know what I'm good. I don't need to do this. I don't know if you've ever jumped out of a plane or something, but you go and you look back and you go, how did I do that? Sometimes I, it baffles me too that I, I just sort of did it. Yeah, I guess if I had thought about it too much, it would have crippled me. Were you at all concerned, any part of your calculus, what if this doesn't work? What consequence might there be for Michael? No. If he's an actor, he wants to work, he wants to be a star or whatever. No. I, I mean, he's, what is he now, 20, 22? You asked for it, so. I want to go to college. I can't get called with like this. David Chase knows he's asked for it as well. I always think to myself, when are people going to get tired of this family? I mean, how about never? I, I mean, I guess that's possible, yeah. That's just not the way I think. Knowing one thing he can count on from the extended family of passionate Sopranos fans is an unvarnished answer. And so I'm asking a guy who's at this level, does it still matter? Yeah. I mean, I'm one human being trying to communicate with a couple of million human beings and what they respond to me, of course it matters. Ankle dick. If they say, you surprised me, that was interesting, or, that matters as opposed to, hey, you know, that's, we saw that already.